Hi everyone, my name is Tegan and welcome back to Time to Write. So today I have a confession to make. I think it's pretty obvious to everyone involved that I am not a bookworm, I am a book dragon. And currently I have about 70 books on my physical TBR. It is humiliating, I know. So at some point soon I'd like to start a little series on actually getting through and reading this TBR and reviewing them and just making space in my life for more TBRs. So today we're going to go through, I think, every single book. We're going to discuss why it's on there, why I haven't read it yet, and just show you what I have, just so it's out there. It's out there. We can move on. Let's begin. The first two books I see up here are these ones that I've chosen for the TBR video that I was, it's in progress. You'll see it in maybe like a month. But the first one here is The Stolen Air by Holly Black. This one I picked up because I love the Cool Print series. And I'm one of the rare people who didn't pick it up for the romance. I was actually happy that there was limited romance in it and it was all political fairy vibes. So, interested in this one. I think I've, no, I didn't pre-order this. I found this in the works for like half price, I think. And I thought, yeah, I'll get it and I'll read it eventually. And this one's here just because I generally haven't got round to reading it. It's on my list. I think my brain is so small, too small for fantasy right now. And too small for like that's not even a chunky hardback but compared to like my son the difference would be he's he's chunky so this one just getting around to this one is the lies of saints by lee bardugo and i also have the language of thorns up here on my tbr which are ones i'm getting around to because when i was reading the percy jackson i think percy jackson the greek heroes i as much as i enjoyed the stories individually i didn't like reading it in one go as a book because it gets repetitive when you're just reading the story 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 so i've been neglecting this one and language of thorns just because these are the stories about the saints and they're also very short and i feel like i could smash through this that is a beautiful illustration i'm just neglecting them because i think i had a vaguely bad time reading one book and now i'm projecting onto all the others the other thing on the top shelf that's on my TBR is another Lee Bardugo and that is Ninth House. That one I started reading as an ebook, I think, and I just, I think I needed to keep flicking back and forth to try and work out what was going on in the timeline and jumping between different periods, not periods, time periods. So I think I was waiting to get a physical copy to, so I could flick through a lot easier. On to the next shelf behind here, we have All These Bodies by Kendra Blake. We also wrote Anna Justin Blood that I love and Three Dark Crowns, that series that I have mixed feelings about. This one, I think I found it in Asda on like one of the two for seven pound offers. I started reading it and then I moved house. It got misplaced for a while and I just forgot I started reading it. We have Skin of the Sea by Natasha Bowen. I think I picked it up on Impulse because it was pretty and had watery sea vibes and I was into that at the time. It might have been the first book that I got from my like local indie bookshop at uni and I thought, well, sporting books, I'll get this one. And I'm looking at it now, I'm not sure if I would actually enjoy reading it the longer I sat with it. So I'm neglecting that one because I'm undecided. And I think there may have been some kind of controversy about some reputation in it that I need to research further. But I will give the book a go before forming more opinions, but that one I'm just neglecting because I've, I've heard things. We have the Graceling series, or at least three books from the Graceling series, which I impulse bought because I think they were £2 on Amazon each. And I thought, yeah, whole series. And I think the fact that I have multiple books in the series is intimidating to me, which would be a common theme for some other books I have on other shelves. Where it's like, yeah, I have it and now I have to commit to it and I'm afraid of commitment and what if I don't like it. But I've heard great things about this. One of my friends has read them and loved them, so that means I will love them. I just have to read them. Those ones I'm also neglecting because my brain's just not built for fantasy right now. It's it's full of mush. Don't do it. Don't do a master's degree. And the other two books on this shelf on my TBR are The City of Brass and Violet Lady of Thorns, which are also fantasy. One of them I was gifted and I'm not sure if I'll like it. So that one's neglected because I'm not sure. I didn't choose that one myself, so I'm not sure. Violet Lady of Thorns was also a gifted one because the person who read it did not enjoy it and thought, hey, here's a, I think it's an Alcray special edition. And I said, yeah, I'll take that because I think I will like that. That's it. On the far left of the shelf that you can't quite see, so I will pull it out. We have The Tell of Truthwater Lake, which I'm not fully sure what it's about. This was another impulse purchase because I saw it in my local indie bookstore. Also, oh, she's got a book about lighthouses. 
the covers of all the books in here first of all i love when things print on in the cover i love duplex printing but these are all beautiful and i love them so i'm going to read this one soon just so i can confirm if i like her writing and now that i see a lighthouse book lighthouses just have a grip on me and i don't know why now that i know there's a lighthouse book i will read this one friends that bind the alcra edition is on here because it came recently and i need like a good like six to twelve business months to decide to read something and i think i've also had mixed reviews about that one but this this edition of it is gorgeous i need time to decide if i actually want to read it or if it's just decoration this side we have Chain of Gold and Chain of Iron by Cassandra Clare. I did start reading Chain of Gold, Chain of Gold, and then I think a lot of the characters that are in it are named after other characters of hers. I think these are maybe like the children or grandchildren of the, is it Dark Artifices? The Clockwork ones. And I started reading it and I just got confused because my brain's small, so I think I'm on the verge of rereading every single Cassandra Clare book, and then I'll get to these ones. Ink Cart is also here, that was an impulse purchase I got the same time as the Truthwater Lake one so I thought it had a pretty cover and then I found out that oh there's a film about Ink Cart and I watched the film and I hated it so that one's there because I'm trying to get over the fact that it had a bad adaptation in my opinion if it turns out it's a bad book as well, won't be very happy on the bottom row down here we have some Neil Gaiman, these are I saw Stardust, loved it, got this one because it's little, also this one's little. These are just very new additions to my collection, so I'll be rereading them eventually. Also on the bottom shelf we have these lovely classics that I have acquired that have these, I have no idea what it's called, but this like kind of paper cut out. This one is Emma by Jane Austen. We have the Wonderland collection and then we have Sherlock Holmes down here. There's a lot of books in this collection, so the ones that have this green colour scheme I think were like spring themed. I think these ones might have been summer themed or this could have been the winter one. And then in the autumn themed colours they had Dracula and I really wanted it but I think they don't sell these anymore so I can't have like a full seasonal set. But those ones I'm just getting round to because my brain again, as it's not built for high fantasy, it's not quite built for classics right now. So I did pick up the ones that I think I would like or know I would like. It's just a case of getting around to it and waiting for... I guess I am a mood reader. I'm not too sure... Ooh, we have The Lie Tree and Face Like Glass by Frances Hardinge. They're the books that have been here for so long, I just forget they're there and I haven't read them. But I have read Unraveler and Deep Light and Cuckoo Song, I think, by her, and I love them. And she has such a grip on my brain chemistry now that I know I love them. So I have no words to read them because like, I know I like it, I'll read it at some point when I need a pick me up. The other things down on this bottom shelf are the stack of my recently acquired indie fantasy books and Immortal Longings. <laughs> this is just a case of these are new, I will get around to them. Let's slide over to this side so we can see what's going on on these shelves. This entire stack here is a TBR. This one came in some kind of book box I got when this book came out so many many years ago this one was a pre-order because i thought it was pretty and i loved it and i started reading and it didn't grip me straight away so when i moved house i forgot i had it and i think this one um so stone blind tomorrow tomorrow and tomorrow ariadne were all like impulse purchases in the waterstones half price hardback sale so they've been here for about eight months now more case of getting into mood reading Witchstein is an ARC that I think I won a Goodreads giveaway before they changed it, so Goodreads giveaways were US exclusive. And I think I got it because I was just an like impulse entering every single giveaway, so I'm not sure if I even actually want to read this. Okay, going back to the top, we have Dan Howell's book, Waiting for When I'm in the Mood for Nonfiction. Then we have this Stephen King anthology, I think, Bizarre Bad Dreams, again I just had it for so long and I'm not in the mood. Another case of I feel like the pressure to read it all in one go rather than just like a story at the time. So not interested right now. Then we have both of my RF Quarren books, we have Babel and Yellowface, both of which I know I love. Babel I think is a bit too like academic for me right now with my mush brain. Yellowface I've heard that you can smash through in the afternoon because it's that gripping and enthralling and easy to read. So excited for that one, gonna 
read that soon if I if I have the brain power. We have, I think, these three books in the Scorzeri Pleasant series I haven't read because I read the first three and I think I probably moved to uni for the first time and didn't bring these with me and now I forgot what's happened in the first one so I need to reread all of them before continuing. Only a Monster is a recent edition. I think this was also an Alcroate book probably months ago maybe even probably even last year that I knew I'd love. I never I think I forgot about it that I saw it in Waterstones on like the buy one get one half price table. So I got this one and at the time I also got this one here. So I'm gonna read these. Eventually they're new editions. This one I got because I thought oh it's got spooky horror vibes and that's what I'm into right now. So I thought yes I need this. It's, it's very fluffy. But also I loved all of this author's other work so Saw Kill Girls and Some Kind of Happiness are the ones I have and I'm excited to read more. Also on the far end of the shelf we have a scatter of light which must have also been from the half price hardback sale so getting around to it when I'm in the mindset. Then we have these and I think it's quite clear why I haven't read these yet. Again high fantasy getting around to it. I've heard that it is because Pride of the Honestry came out first. This one I do own on ebook but I impulse picked it up because I went to the book signing for A Day of Fall of Night and Samantha Sharon was just so enthralling as a speaker that I thought, yes, I will buy everything you own. They're signed, they're cute, I love them. So getting around to this, because the size is a threat, but I've heard that it is very beneficial to read the prequel one actually before, even though it came out after, because it does do a lot of good world building to make this make sense. So now that I know that, I'll read them eventually. What else haven't I read? Lolita, because I got it when I was far too young, so I thought, yeah, edgy. And then I started reading it, I couldn't get into it because I was probably far too young and then I forgot I had it and I probably will actually read this at some point because now I, I'm wondering I'm wondering we have the third and fourth book in the 100 series I wasn't overly huge on the first two books I've heard that the adaptation is it a tv series is actually very much better but because these are short I'm keeping them around to read at some point so a lot of these I just haven't read because I haven't had access to them for three to four years on and off and now that I'm here I think wow I can read these so instead I've been reading like a lot of ebooks and a lot of library ebooks support your libraries another thing I have on this shelf is the Ark of Songs from the Deep which was gifted to me because I was on a hunt for watery books and my friend who has access to these apps was like here here's this one for you and then my fixation with watery books immediately died so I'm waiting for that to re-emerge to read that one down on the bottom shelf is largely Percy Jackson ones, but we do have Daughter of the Deep by Rick Riordan, which I started reading. I don't think I could get into it because I had very low patience at the time, or I wasn't just in the mood to read a specific one. And I put it down, and again, it's a case of coming back to it when I'm ready. I think I've done pretty good, and I've read... Oh, no, never mind. The Winner's Curse. I read The Midnight Lie, and I love The Hollow Heart. And this one, I think, this is about... This is almost a prequel in a sense, because the main characters in this one are the parents of some characters in the other ones. So a fun easter egg. So I think I would like to read this one to understand more of those other books. And the person who recommended it to me loved it. I don't know if this one is for me as much as the other ones, but I am interested. And I think out of, there's a third shelf that you can get in glimpses of over here, which is largely Bee Schwab, Maggie Stavotter, and The Vampire Diaries, and also my heart stops over there. So I've read pretty much all of those, except there's two Schwab books. I have The Dark Vault, which I think is two books in one, and I have The Savage Song, which again is a case of getting into it, because I'm obsessed with her. And then I moved to uni and I didn't take my books with me. And also I just showed I didn't have time to exist at uni. So get into those soon, soon. I also have The Secret History down there, which I'm summoning the brain power to read. And the other one, I have Daughter of Smoke and Bone. I think, is it a trilogy or I have three books from the series? Because again, they were two pounds on Amazon and I thought, yes, I will have them and now I have commitment issues. So I have always definitely missed some because I know I haven't read If We Were Villains and now I'm just not sure where it is on these shelves. And there's a few more I haven't read. And I also have read a couple since deciding or counting that there were 70, I think there's 74 books on my TBR. So in a few weeks, you will see a video of me beginning reading my TBR, but know that that was filmed before this video. 
there's a number of books in my life and I would like there to be less so eventually there could be more. Thank you for watching this video. If you have an extensive TV bar like me or if you are a normal sane person who actually reads your books, tell me more in the comments below and also most anticipated book from your TBR because again I am looking for Rex. Thank you for watching this video and I will see you next time. Bye!